Hey everybody, in this video I want to compare and contrast what we are doing with the psoas muscle when we're walking and what we're doing with the glutes when we're walking. More specifically, I'm going to be referring mostly to the extensor functions of the gluteus maximus in contrast with the flexor functions of the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle is in front of our pelvis extending from our lumbar vertebrae down into the pelvis and attaching to the femur, the psoas muscle is used to flex the leg up towards the body. When we're standing with the weight on the leg, action of the psoas muscle pulls the lumbar spine forward towards the leg and helps to maintain the lumbar lordosis in standing posture. The gluteus maximus muscle, or the extensor fibers of it, help to extend the knee behind the body. There's other functions of the gluteus maximus which include external rotation of the hip and also abduction of the hip, but we're really contrasting here the extensor function of the glutes with the flexor functions of the psoas because they're not going to be happening at the same time. Those muscles are in direct opposition to one another. Now how we use the glutes is really going to depend on what sort of level surface we're walking on. When we're walking on level ground, we're not going to be using the extensor portion of the glutes nearly as much as we would if we were walking up a slope. If we look at the EMG analysis of gait and the gait cycle, what we'll notice is the gluteus maximus begins firing just before the heel contacts the ground and reaches its peak activity during the loading response, which is that time between the heel contact and when the forefoot hits the flat position, which is also when your knee is going to be directly lined up over the ankle. That's when the gluteus maximus extensor fibers are most active. And what they're doing here is eccentrically slowing down the flexion of the hip that occurs during the loading response. You'll notice from the EMG studies that after the foot hits the flat position, the gluteus maximus shuts off. It's not used to propel the body forward. That is the function of the psoas muscle. When we are using our psoas muscle correctly, what's happening is this. As we place our heel onto the ground, we are using our psoas muscle on the rear leg to pull the leg forward by flexing it. So imagine pulling my right knee forward as I shift weight. Once I get to the flat foot position, I'm now going to use my psoas muscle on the front leg to pull the lumbar spine forward and at the same time I'm using my lower abs, which are also ignored in research on walking, to tuck the pelvis. The combination of those two actions are going to allow me to pull my spine forward while maintaining a vertical posture. Now many people think the glutes are such a powerful muscle, why wouldn't we be using them when we're walking? Well, we are using them. When we walk uphill, which is a common occurrence, we do need to use the glutes. The glutes help us to push the body up the slope during the loading response phase. When we're walking uphill, we require the glutes to push back against the ground to give the body the support against gravity. If we were to let go of the glutes and that extension, the body would fall backwards down the hill. This gluteus maximus extensor action on the side of the rear leg occurs up through the end of the loading response where the foot hits the flat position. At this point, we do need to now engage the psoas muscle as we would have in a normal walk on level ground. And in this circumstance, the psoas muscle is going to pull the spine forward and up into a standing position. Once we reach the standing position, the psoas muscle is fully engaged. We are now reached vertical posture, standing directly over the stance leg, and now we have to engage the glute max again to push the body forward. This type of extension of the hip when we're on a hill is different than what we're doing when we are walking on level ground. 
After we reach the end of that push forward with the glutes, ending at the end of the mid stance phase, we need to use the upper part of the waist to rotate to bring the heel down. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I'll see you in the next one.